There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you? Patrolman Nelson and Hamilton. <clears throat> uh, sit down, then. Excuse me, uh, you're the 50th radio car team I've interviewed since I started this investigation. Invest... <clears throat> investigation? <laughs> yes. Why you radio car men asked to be split up after an average of only about a year and a half? Now, you two. You've been together 16 months, and I understand you've just asked to be transferred to other partners. I'm trying to find out why. Why do teams break up? Well, sir, it's just that you're cooped up together in a patrol car, eight hours a day, six days a week. It's the little things that get you. He's a foot tapper. A <laughs> uh, foot tapper? He keeps tapping his foot. Every night, all I dream about is a gigantic big toe tapping away. There's a glove compartment opener. All he does is open and close that glove compartment a thousand times a day. Click, click, click. Tap, tap, tap. Click, click, click. <laughs> click, click, click. Wait, tap, tap, tap. I'm trying to find... Yes, Morgan. Let's hear those final statistics uh, you asked for. Oh, yes. What is the average time that partners stay together? Uh, 16 months, three days, except... Except what? Well, it'll come out to 16 months, three days when we get this obvious error corrected from the 53rd precinct. An error? You see, their records show the two partners have been together without a single transfer for nine years. Nine years? Obviously, they meant nine months. Yes, sir. Wait, uh, we better check this. Uh, get me the captain of the 53rd precinct. Nine years? Patrolman Gunther Tutti and Francis Muldoon. Car 54. <laughs> Beautiful dream. Hark unto me. You're all right, Francis. You get that last boom right on the nose. It's a cinch, Gunther, when you're following a man with perfect pitch. Thanks, Francis. Oh, oh, look at that sports car. Jump at Jehoshaphat. How'd you like to be behind the wheel of that baby? Hey, that reminds me, I got my brother-in-law's new car over the weekend. And I know this is due for a thousand-mile checkup. But the thing is, it hasn't been driven a thousand miles yet. It's been driven only 985 miles. Now, if I wait, the garage will be closed over the weekend, and then it'll be over a thousand miles. So the question is, should I take it in for a thousand mile checkup now before I drive a thousand miles? Or should I wait and take a chance and get past the thousand mile mark? Say, a thousand and ten. But then it wouldn't be a thousand mile checkup no more. I wonder if they got a thousand and ten mile checkup. White wall tires, green sedan. What was the license number? How do you know it was your brother-in-law? Mm -hmm. Where does he live? 53rd Precinct. Who? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Captain Block. It's for you. It's Chief Bradley from headquarters. Headquarters calling me? What's wrong? He didn't say it. I'll take it in my office. Abrams, if you've been covering up for somebody... <laughs> Hello, uh, Captain Block. Uh, no, no, nothing wrong. I'm just checking an error in one of your reports. An error? <laughs> yes, sir, we've got two men, Tootie and Muldoon. Tootie and Muldoon, headquarters finally found out about them. <laughs> yes, sir? How long have they been together? Uh, let me see, sir. I have it on the tip of my tongue. I would say they have been partners now. They've been together. Oh, yes, I have it right in front of me, sir. They have been partners, I would say, approximately... Well, they have... Nine years! <laughs> They've been together nine years? Yes, sir. Why, sir? Why? Uh, Captain, do you realize that the average radio patrol team stays together only 16 months? Nine years? Yeah. Captain, I'll be down at your precinct station first thing in the morning. I want everything that you have in the files on Tootie and Muldoon. That'll be all. Yes, sir. <laughs> trouble? Do you ever hear from headquarters if it isn't trouble? Why didn't you tell me Tootie and Muldoon have been together for nine years? I don't know. They've just always been together. You never think of them apart, Captain. Well, headquarters does. Every other team gets shifted around every 16 months, they tell me. We got a team that's been together for nine years. 
No wonder downtown thinks I'm goofing off. <laughs> Shoot Bradley a personnel will be down here tomorrow morning, first thing. And they don't come up to the Bronx for the country air. But Tudio Muldoon never asked to be transferred. They never asked to be transferred. Got to do something to split them up by tomorrow morning. <laughs> Captain, you, you mean that I ought to ride with somebody else? Get another partner instead of Gunther? You're, you're joking. No, no. For a change, it'd do you good. Now, confidentially, how can you stand Toddy's incessant chattering? His chattering? Oh, that's the best thing about Gunther. <laughs> he chatters away. The long, tedious days just seem to fly by. Uh, Captain, I'd, I'd be lost without Gunther. Is there anything else? No. Nothing else. Don't you think it's time you got another partner? You mean right along with someone next to me that's not Muldoon? I believe that's what's meant by getting a new partner. Oh, but we're used to each other. Well, why couldn't you get used to somebody else? Ooh, it's hard to explain. Eh? After nine years, you get used to the habits of each other. Like, this is a little thing, but Francis knows that I like gum, and every day he brings me gum. A new partner would bring you gum, too. I would see to it. It wouldn't be the same. I'd know that the new guy was bringing me gum because you told him to bring me gum. <laughs> well, there's a big difference between thoughtful gum and forced gum. <laughs> Tony, why you? Come in. Uh, oh, excuse me, Captain. I was wondering how long you're going to be. Uh, you see, I always drive Gunther home. Otherwise, he has to ride a crowded bus. It gives him a headache. Here you go. Coming, Gunther. Coming, Francis. Here's your gum. Oh, thank you. Let's go. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't break up a friendship like that. I know. <laughs> Together nine years. We can find out these psychological elements these men have that make them fit together so well. Here's their latest physicals. Oh, where's the character analysis? Tootie, Gunther J, married. Extrovert, busybody. Talks incessantly. <laughs> Why should Captain Block want to split up me and Muldoon? Unless... Are you still on that? Unless Muldoon asked him to. Shame on you, Gunther. A nice, quiet man like Francis? Sure he's quiet. Now I know why. For nine years, he's been sitting alongside of me just thinking. Thinking how to get rid of me. But, Gunther, he's your friend. Look, he's got a right to get rid of me if he wants to. But why does he have to do it in that underhanded way? Why couldn't he come right out to me and say, Gunther, I want to get rid of you because you're a big windbag, a blabbermouth, and a bore. And nine years is enough with a slob like you. <laughs> He's a nice way to do it. Muldoon, Francis A., single, lives with mother, introvert, quiet, good-natured. Don't tell me how nice Gunther is. Does a nice guy behind your back go to the captain and ask to be transferred? Oh, he never fooled me for a minute with that cheerful, just a big kid act. I knew he's a sneak nine years ago, the first day we went on duty, when he sneaked behind the wheel without asking me if I wanted to drive. <laughs> really, Chief Bradley, I don't deserve any credit at all. For keeping two men together for nine years, it's wonderful. First bright spot in my investigation. I want to study Tootie and Muldoon so that we can learn better how to pair off our patrol car officers. Oh, uh, this is Lieutenant Benton of Public Relations. Nice human interest story. Two patrolmen together for nine years. Good for the department. Well, they ought to be getting here any minute. They always arrive together. They're inseparable. <laughs> hey, Muldoon. Find us 806, will you? Hey, where's Tootie? How should I know? Look in there. He's probably sitting in the captain's lap, whispering more lies in his ear. Muldoon! Tootie, didn't Muldoon drive you to work? I came by bus. You meet a nicer class of people. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to sign in. I can't understand it. All right, all right, let's go, let's go. Can't you spell your own name? Tootie, two O's and a D, like an ooh, what a dummy. <laughs> I don't know how to spell my name. I know a lot of things you don't think I know, mister, know-it-all. Things like what? 
I know a lot of things you don't think I know. And don't ask me what things, just things. Yeah. Well, I happen to know a few things, too, sneaky. You're sneaky yourself. Oh, that was a clever remark. Of course, you do your best work, but you have a fast back insurance. Oh, yeah? Yeah! 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 Chief, I, I don't know what to say. So that's the secret of what keeps two men together. Hatred. But, Chief, they really love each other. Why, only yesterday you should have heard what they said when I had them in my office and I was trying... So that's it. Each one thinks the other one came to me and... And what? Uh, uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, wait here, Chief. Wait here. Those are very delicate sentiments coming from a guy who eats corned beef and cabbage with his hands. You leave more grease on the steering wheel than we got in the transmission. Oh, shut up. Shut up yourself. Oh, yeah? Wait, wait, now wait, fellas. Captain, uh, I'm putting in a request for a new partner. Me too. Uh, will you two listen to me? I have a confession to make. I... <laughs> this is personal. Do you mind? <laughs> Now look, calling you in yesterday, trying to get you to split up, was all my idea. Your idea? You mean Francis didn't ask you to? I made a mistake. <laughs> now that this foolishness is over, before you go on duty, Chief Bradley wants to talk to you downstairs, each of you. He'll be in my office. <laughs> Gosh, Gunther, and I, I thought that you went... I, I, I was miserable. I didn't sleep a wink last night. Oh, me too. I stayed up. I watched a late, late show. So did I. Hey, was the wonderful the way Richard Barthelmus flew that plane over the mountains and he redeemed himself? I think he redeemed himself in this picture much better than Lou Anne's redeemed himself in that picture in Donovan's brain. <laughs> he sure can redeem himself. But I guess it's easy for him. They keep giving the parts where he redeems himself and he gets good at it. You take an actor who gets parts that are nice and easy. Then they hit him with a part where he has to redeem himself. <laughs> He's lost. I remember where Cary Grant had to redeem himself. <laughs> you know how I feel about Cary Grant. But I gotta say, he didn't redeem himself too. Now, we didn't but this is extraordinary, Officer Tully. In the nine years that you men have been together, Muldoon has never done anything that has gotten on your nerves? Absolutely nothing, sir. Uh, can I go now? Francis gets nervous if I keep waiting. In just a minute. I want every fact. In interviewing hundreds of men, we found that they never break up over big issues. It's always the little things. Oh, that's silly. Letting little things break up friendships. Well, it certainly is. Now, for instance, here's a man who wanted to change to another patrol car because he said his partner blew his nose too much. Oh, Francis blows his nose too, but not too much. Not too little either. Well, Francis blows his nose just enough. <laughs> well, I can see why you two men got along so well for so long. Well, I wish I had more facts here, but obviously there's nothing Muldoon does that disturbs you. Absolutely nothing, sir. Uh, yes? Well, there's one little thing. Oh, oh, it's nothing. It's not even worth mentioning. No, no. Well, what is it? Well, Francis pulls his ear a lot. Uh, how does he pull his ear like this? <laughs> oh, no, sir. When Muldoon pulls his ear, he really pulls it. Oh, oh. And that doesn't get on your nerves? Oh, not at all, sir. I, I wouldn't even brought it up, but you said you wanted every little detail. <laughs> you say you can't think of anything, not a single thing that Tootie does or says that bothers you in the least? No, sir, not one single thing. Well, that's truly amazing. Uh, thank you, Muldoon. That'll be all. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh yes? Now that I think of it, there is one very little thing that he does. Tell me about it. Well, Tootie has an expression he uses, but it really doesn't bother me that much. What is this expression he uses? Jumping Jehoshaphat. Jumping Jehoshaphat? Uh, when does he say jumping Jehoshaphat? Oh, he doesn't say jumping Jehoshaphat much at all. Just once in a while, and it doesn't bother me. Like, like for instance, we'll be riding along and he'll say, uh, Jump at Jehoshaphat, look out for that car. Jump at Jehoshaphat, you, you just missed him. Jump at Jehoshaphat, be careful. <laughs> he does say it quite a bit, doesn't he? Yes, well, uh, thank you, Muldoon. Hello, we all. You're welcome, sir. Oh. Uh, uh, yes? There's another thing he's always saying. Uh, he says, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh? He says, ooh, ooh, more than he says, jump at Jehoshaphat. Ooh, ooh, huh? Yeah, you know, like you'll say, ooh, ooh, look at that pretty girl, or ooh, ooh, I'm out of cigarettes. 
when he says, ooh, ooh, and jumping Jehoshaphat, it doesn't bother you? Or... No, sir, it's never bothered me at all. The only reason I brought it up was because you asked about that sort of thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well? Wonderful, just I'm wonderful. I'm going to contact the newspapers. It's a natural. The human side of the police department. Jump and Jehoshaphat. <laughs> what a nice day. Ooh, ooh. Look at that big St. Bernard. Jump there. Would you please not? Would I please not what? Nothing. Forget it. Jump and Jehoshaphat. It's 4 o'clock already. Gunther, I'm your friend, right? Oh, my best friend. Why? If I ask a favor of you, you won't get mad, will you? Jump and Jehoshaphat. Why should I get mad? <laughs> Would you please stop saying jump and Jehoshaphat? Would I please stop saying what? Stop saying jump and Jehoshaphat. Do I say that? Just now and then. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even know I was saying it. Uh, sorry if it bothers you. No, no, it's never really bothered me. It's. I probably shouldn't have mentioned it. It's just a habit you got into. Yeah, we all get at the funny little habits, don't we? You are rich? No, why? Yeah, I just wondered. If you really doesn't it, uh, why do you keep pulling it? Well, I didn't even know I was doing it. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you got a right to pull your ear if you want. Go ahead and pull it. Go ahead. You can pull it. I don't want to pull my ear. Well, that's up to you. Feel free. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that's a new one. What's a new one? You're pulling your nose now. I'm not pulling my nose. I'm rubbing my nose. Well, don't get mad. I thought maybe you didn't know about it. I just wanted to point it out to you. I was not pulling my nose. I was rubbing my nose. That's the difference. Pulling, rubbing, it's all the same. It's not the same. Okay, okay. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Look at that car. I saw that car, and would you please stop saying that stupid ooh, ooh. I'll say ooh, ooh any time I want to say ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Okay, smart guy. There, how do you like that? Well, took the plate to say you gave you want to get nasty, huh? Jump at Jehoshaphat. Jump at Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Nothing sensational. What I want is a nice, warm story about the friendship and loyalty of two men. Should be coming off duty any minute. Oh, uh, yes. And I want a picture of the captain with the boys. No, 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 no. This is their show. Now, look, why don't you take that picture as they walk in? They always come in arm and arm. That's a good idea. Here they come. Get the photographer's room. Who are you pushing? A big blabbermouth. That's who. Ooh, ooh. Jump <laughs> <laughs> Let me have you. Let me take a shot up. I've been waiting for this for nine years. Uh, big mouth. I'd like to see you try it. I've been waiting nine years, too. Have I? Get him in my office. 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 No, no, no. no. I'll give you a mistake. mistake. No. I know. Cheat him. No, no. I really don't. No, no. No, no. I'll give you a mistake. 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 I'll give you that was a charming picture of true friendship and devotion. You sure made me look good. I'm sorry, Captain. Just get me another partner and you'll have no more trouble out of me. Starting tomorrow, you'll have another partner. If Chief Bradley reports this to the commissioner, it may be me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain. The incident is closed. Today, starting tomorrow, your new partner will be Nicholson. Nicholson? What a wonderful guy. What a lucky break. <laughs> soon, your new partner will be O'Hara. O'Hara? Oh, gee, he's about the nicest guy I could think of. <laughs> All right, fine, now shake hands. Shake hands, that's an order. Now, that's the last I want to hear about this. Dismissed. O'Hara. <laughs> Boy, what a beautiful day, huh? <laughs> You a Yankee fan, Muldoon? <laughs> you been following the situation in Europe? <laughs> you know we've been riding in this car for five hours and you haven't said one word. <laughs> you were going to 
say anything? I mean, say something, for gosh sake. Say something. Say something about what? Hey, you're doing fine. You talk. Keep it up. <laughs> That's it, huh? Finish talking for the day, huh? Maybe I'll think of something tomorrow. Not with me, you won't. <laughs> well, I went over to his house today to cock the spaniel there. Well, this is the same cock the spaniel that I told you about the last time. This is a different cock the spaniel. And this cock the spaniel, he kept looking at me while I was eating. I think I was eating from his plate or something. He just kept looking, see? But you can see the way he looked. That really, way down deep, this cock the spaniel, he didn't believe he was a cock the spaniel. He wanted to be something else. But he wasn't a bad dog. But he just kept looking at me all the time. My brother-in-law talks a lot, but I don't care. <laughs> he is the bad fellow. He meets a lot of crazy people when he goes fishing. He met one fellow one day. I'll never forget, he was telling me about him. His name was Ed. No, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't Ed. His name was Ted. Tootie. Ted Amiel. What? Shut up! <laughs> Personally, I've always liked Lola Brigida better than Marilyn Monroe. How do you feel about it? Not interested in women either, huh? How about basketball? You're a tall guy. You must have played basketball. Want to talk about basketball? Nah. nah. <laughs> Beautiful dreamer. What was that? Was that you? Did you actually say something? I was just thinking of something. <laughs> You know, something not funny that way. God has stopped my circulation. On the other hand, my stockings keep falling down. I try to get bobby socks, but they don't sell them for men. You know, they should... <laughs> You're not listening, are you? What? You're not listening, are you? No. <laughs> Captain, Mr. Have a Frank, heart. will you? Will you hold it, man? Look, Captain, we're willing to risk our lives, even go beyond the call of duty. But asking us to ride with Tootie and Muldoon, that's just too much. Captain, riding with Muldoon is spooky. He never says a word. The day I rode with him, we arrested a bookmaker who called me a dirty, rotten cop. I could have kissed him. At least he talked to me. <laughs> well, you can't shut Tootie up. The day I rode with him, he talked for eight solid hours about how he used to wear suspenders, but now he wears a belt. Eight hours? <laughs> We've had it. We've had it. Hold, 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 hold it, man, hold it. Let's face it, men. The only one who can ride with Tootie is Muldoon. The only one who can ride with Muldoon is Tootie. We've got to get them together in car 54 again. 53rd to dispatch. Send car 22, 807, and 54 to Marmion and East 175th Street. Accident. Over and out. Hey, Tootie, come in. Tony, will you make out the report? I'll check the damage. Sure. Oh, don't. Will you take the facts? I'll check the witnesses. Sure. Come here. What happened? I was driving along maybe eight or nine miles an hour, and this guy came from out of nowhere. Nowhere? I was right the car. All right, what's the license? I guess that takes care of it. Well, that's it. Jump at Jehoshaphat, beautiful dreamer. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Go on. Oh, beautiful dreamer. Hey, I took my brother-in-law's car in for that thousand-mile check. And it actually was a thousand and ten miles, but they did it for me anyway. They're real nice. They give me that ten-mile break, you know. There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 
54, where are 